Hello everyone! The long-awaited episode 18 just came out a few hours ago, and oh boy, it was just excellent. After the release of the 17th episode, things started to unwrap at some really crazy speed. So today I'm going to break the whole episode down for you, and if you're really ready to find out where the POV turned out to be after having an unearthly ride with the secret agent who appears to have another special name, then put all your business aside for the next 10 minutes and trust me, today I'm going to analyze the whole 18th episode for you, and then I'll show you all the secrets and Easter eggs that you have certainly missed. What is the true origin of the secret agent? And what is his actual name? Where does the POV turn out to be after he escapes the arena? And most importantly, what is going to happen in this crazy fight between Titan Drillman and the Astro Toilet in the beginning of new episode? Get your tea and snacks ready and prepare to watch this video to the end, because I saved the juiciest part for later as always. Let's go. But before I'll start digging into episode 18, let me remind you real quick about the events of the previous episode so you won't get too confused about what has actually been going on. So, the POV who turns out to be no other than the legendary plunger cameraman, by the way, gets brought straight to the main speakerman's base where he sees the core of X-18 cannon getting packed into special protective placeholder, and then he is being dragged to the special fighting arena to entertain all these pompous pricks with speakers with his initial demise. But as it turns out to be later, our Plungerman Chad is really not that simple as he may look at first sight. So he withstands the first encounter with the terrifying creature that came straight out of Stranger Things universe without a scratch, and then happens something truly awesome. A portal opens in the thin air and we see no other than the secret agent of Monster Up's universe to step out of here and help Plungerman to stay alive and not get eaten by these terrifying flycatchers. And that's how the previous episode ended. So now when you all are set and ready, episode 18 is already on your screens, so let's talk about it. So in the beginning of the episode, we see this very scene the previous episode ended with, the terrifying Demogorgon creature from the Stranger Things series jumps right at the POV's direction, but thankfully the secret agent came here not to just sit on one spot and be pretty, but to actually do something epic. So he easily dodges the creature's attacks and shows him his very special melee combo with the juicy ending stance where he simply smashes the enemy with an explosion coming after his axe reaches the ground. And did you notice how the color of this axe's ability is actually bright red? It's a really important detail to remember, but you'll understand how significant it is a little bit later. So for now, keep that information in mind as I'll get back to it later in this video. And by the way, just one second before that something really interesting happens. Did you notice how the Demogorgon creature freezes on the spot for just one second as if he's being in disbelief to see the secret agent in front of him? And how only a couple of seconds afterwards he launches a straightforward attack? I actually asked Monster Up himself about this particular moment because it looked pretty suspicious to me and the creator of the series told me that my feelings didn't trick me and this detail is really important. So as it turns out, this zombie has actually recognized the secret agent because he's already seen him before. And to add even more to it, here's what Monster Up said. Zombie Demogorgon was really surprised to see the knight in this universe once again because he was supposed to leave it for good. And what does that mean exactly will be later revealed in the additional secret scenes. So first thing first, we've got an actual name for the secret agent now. So he is the knight. And this name, in fact, suits this character perfectly well. And why it is so, I'm going to reveal to you a little bit later in this video. So watch it to the end in order to find it all out. And don't forget to give this video a like, because I appreciate it a lot and subscribe to my channel, as I really want to achieve my goal in having 100,000 subscribers by the end of the next month. Okay, if you subscribed now, let's move on. After dealing with the enemy, the secret agent takes a powerful stance and addresses the audience with the speech that sounds like this. Hey, you citizens of Genesis, you've been searching for the wrong enemy all this time because the true enemy is not actually the Alliance, but the virus. So to win against it, Speakerman should unite with the other races and not fight over nothing. And by the way, the secret agent was actually voiced by a YouTube creator called Chasing Skyler in this particular scene, and he's done a pretty good job in my opinion. But of course, his words meant little to nothing to the ruthless audience, and just a second after that, the heavy artillery drops down to the arena accompanied by the audience's fascinated roar. These guys really are hopeless, aren't they? So two speakermen in exosuits inspired by the Avatar robotic costumes arrive at the scene, and we see a sign appearing on our screen that goes like, Speakers will survive this war. 
which means that speakermen themselves think how no other species except their own must remain in this world, and that you either should follow their orders and fight on their side, or you should get consumed by zombie virus and go to the better world. And oh man, these speakermen seem to simply not have a heart, don't they? Just think for yourselves, guys. Speakermen gotta be so technologically advanced and developed, so it would be indeed much easier to find a cure from zombie virus if they actually put their arrogance and hatred aside and united with both the rest of the Alliance's forces and Skibidi toilets. But their motives turned out to be really dark and eerie in the end, and I am absolutely sure that the Knight didn't know about it before his speech, and he held the best of hopes for them. And by the way, considering his kind soul and good intentions, I think I'm going to refer to the secret agent as the Knight from now on, so that you wouldn't get too confused here, my friends. That's why he was watching them for such a long time, and he already knew where their base was located, but he didn't actually realize how rotten and darkened their hearts really are, but now he does know this. In order to save the POV Plungerman from that mess for now, the Knight opens up a local portal for him, and it seems to me that opening portals like this is his special ability, which works for shorter distances though. At least when he uses his own powers for that and opens portals with his hand. But when he uses his axe though, he's able to create much longer routes for teleportation and why it is so, you'll understand a little bit later. So the POV jumps straight into this portal and we see a little cutscene, the vibes of which reminded me of the iconic Doctor Who intro a little bit where the characters traveled through time and space as well. And he finds himself in this secret room at the Speakerman's main base where all the shadowy knowledge can be collected. And oh my god, what a harvest the POV is about to get. It's really fortunate for him that the speaker man who was about to guard this place went on some coffee break or something so that nothing stops the POV from investigating this whole area, and there's plenty to look at, actually. Firstly, there's the precious core of X-18 cannon that we saw in the beginning of the previous episode that the POV gets as a Christmas souvenir for later, and then he quickly turns to the table with lots of displays above it. There are three Skibidi YouTubers who film their reactions to Monster Up's Zombie Universe series, whose channel's names are just Cozy, Ahoy, and Chatterbox. And secondly, there's a yellow display with the word Titans on it, which can mean only one thing. The speakerman using this panel actually managed to find the coordinates of all the Titans, and there's a reason for him to do so. And there's one really funny Easter egg here, because if you'll take these exact coordinates and search for them in the web, then you'll get the country Moldova and the city Ungans where the creator of this series is actually from. And I think this is really cute. And now it's time to go to the most interesting part. Do you see this display with four images of differently colored cores? Those are actually the cores the speakermen seek for their own specific purpose. And two of these cores were already detected by them, namely Hephaestus and Genesis. The red and purple cores still remained undetected though. Well, at least for speakermen, because I actually know where the red core is. Do you remember the scene I asked you to draw your attention to because it might be important later? It happened when the knight produced a large explosion with his axe which turned bright red in color at this moment. And yes guys, you've guessed it right. The red core was placed right inside of this axe. And now as the POV knows all the dirty secrets of Speakerman's race, he gets fit into the fancy robotic suit himself. And in this moment, we can notice some kind of timer. But I'm not sure whether he means something significant here or not. And then finally, the speakerman guard gets back from his coffee break, and the dude got punished really quickly for his lack of work discipline. The POV grabs the jetpack that was so conveniently brought right to him, and jumps back at the knight's portal. But it seems while he was missing, the secret agent didn't waste his time in vain and was actually doing pretty good on his own. And in this epic battle, we can observe how good he's actually handling all these enemies while using his unique portal abilities. He is not only able to open and close his portals whenever he likes, but also he can choose the perfect timing for appearance of any of his chosen objects. And it's also possible in his case to hide some object within a portal and keep it in there until the right time comes to release it and make it serve its purpose. When the battle gets on hold, he turns back to the POV and opens another portal for him, this time using his special axe. The POV hesitates a little bit, so the knight shows him this gesture like, come on dude, why being such a chicken? It'll be fine. So the POV takes his expressions for granted and jumps into it. He then sees the whole nebula of different universes being shown to him. And I can see the multiverses of Dom Studio, Maxity, No Skill Clutch, and Verlance. And by the way, guys, would you like see me having an interview with Verlance about his series soon? If you do, then write a comment under this video and give it a like so I will make it happen. 
And besides that, I also saw references to three content creators called Chasing Skyler, Ukerp, and Brot Live. And then the POV gets teleported to the location you guys may have forgotten about, but I surely didn't. It's the exact same place we saw in Episode 7, where we could see the Astro Toilet getting infected with zombie virus. But this time, something unexpected happens. Not only does the infected Titan Drillman appears, but also the Astro Toilet shows up to the party, and it looks to me like this Astro is a complexly different character. At least compare the sizes of these two, they are really not the same. Plus, how would the Astro from the earlier episodes get healed? I really think this ending scene mimics the ending scene of the first part of Episode 72 of Original Boom series, but this time it's the Astro Toilet in G-Man's position, and the infected Titan Drillman is the threat for him to deal with. And speaking of Titan Drillman, I am really excited to see him with full detail now, because he's so badass and creepy at the same time. Instead of a proper core, he has now this eerie meat and teeth hole inside of his body, which makes him look like he just came from the Resident Evil game. He also has this terrifying, widely opened mouth under his head drill, and this personally made my skin crawl. He also has this red claw instead of a proper left arm, and one half of his body is just raw flesh and spiked chains, which reminded me of some monsters from Silent Hill series. Both his head and arm drills are covered in droplets of blood, and his general appearance is beyond horrifying. So what's going to happen in the next episode, and who's going to come out as a winner in this situation? I believe we will find this out when the new episode comes out, and I'll be looking forward to it as I am really hooked at this point. And that was all for today. Write in the comments below about how excited you are to see the 19th episode in order to find out what will happen to the POV next time, and be sure to subscribe to my channel so you will not miss my new videos, and also to my Discord where you can contact me directly and get lots of info for my subscribers only. And that was me, ISO Toilet. See ya!